Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about different access modifiers in C++ classes. That means public, private, and protected. Now we've seen these in some different contexts if you've been watching the series where we've talked about the difference between structs and classes. Go ahead and see if you can recall what that difference is. It's a popular interview question. And if you took a moment to think about it, just remember that structs are always public by default, classes are always private by default, and that's the only difference at all. So with that said though, let's go ahead and see how public, private, and protected work out in inheritance. So I'm going to go ahead and just run through a quick example here where I've created a base class and a derived class that publicly inherits from the base class. And go ahead and see I have derived here. Okay, so if I go ahead and just run this and compile and I'll run our program, well, we'll see that this works just fine. There's nothing super interesting about it quite yet. One thing to notice, and I'm going to talk about this in the next video, is the order of constructors, and I'm just printing those out to help debug, just so you can see that for the derived class, which I'm creating an instance of here, that says object D, both the constructors for the derived and the base are called, as well as the destructors for the derived class and the base class. And again, the derived class is the one that inherits or is growing in functionality from the base class. And that'll be something I emphasize a little bit more in the other video. But back to this idea of access specifiers, public and private and protected. So in order to make this just a little bit more interesting, I'm going to go ahead and paste in some member variables here. And you'll see that I've just named these for the class which they belong, the base class here, and what their access specifier is, public, protected, and private accordingly. Now you'll notice I am allowed to use public more than once if I want to switch, or sometimes I'll just type it to have more clarity in my code. But I can mix these, I can put these in any order that I want, and feel free to experiment with that, but I just wanted to show that for this example. Now let's go ahead and make things a little bit interesting and just see how we can access variables. So this will be a little bit of a guessing game, and I'd like you to follow along if you're able to and try to type out this example just to, again, get some practice with inheritance. And the way to think about this is which member variable can I access from the derived class here? And we're going to go ahead and play this game first by starting with within our derived class and see which variable can we access. And hopefully you'll find some sort of method to this madness here as we try out the different combinations here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just type m base public member variable equals one, two, three, something like that here. So what I'm doing here from my derived class is trying to access a member variable that's public in our base class here. And by the way, these same rules will apply whether I have some member function here. So if I also had uh, void member function here, it would be the same exact rules. So I'm just going to use member variables because they're a little bit more interesting uh, or easy to test here. OK, so let's go ahead and compile this and see if our compiler has any problem with us publicly inheriting from this base class of accessing the member variable uh, that is public. So if I go ahead and run this, no problem. It does indeed compile. Okay, so let's go ahead and test our luck here and see if we're able to uh, access our base class's protected member variable. And I'll just give it some value here. And I'll try to compile. And well, before I do that, let's think about what protected is because we haven't really talked about it. Protected in a way is saying, well, I don't want my member variable to be fully exposed or out into the wild. But maybe within the base class or the child class uh, that I'm deriving from, so this derived class, which is coming from the base, I am able to access some of these variables. OK, so uh, let's go ahead and compile this to see if it works. And it works fine. So I can run the program and so on. Now, let's go ahead and try our next access specifier, so from the base, and this time the private member variable, and see if I can access it. And well, let's go ahead and just think about this. If I'm saying something's private, that's the most sort of conservative protection level that I can have. So it's saying, hey, keep me hidden from the rest of the world. Even if I'm saying I'm 
derived publicly, I still want to be hidden from the world. So let's go ahead and see if this works. And this time we do in fact get an error here because this private member variable here, again, it's hidden. It's encapsulated within the base class. And private's always going to be that way in that we can't see outside or that information is not allowed to be leaked. Okay. So with that said, we can see within this class here derived how we're able to access things. But what about the outside world here when we create an instance of our objects? Let's go ahead and play this same game here. So I'll go ahead and comment this out and I'll just put error because private member variables have to be encapsulated or just belong in the class that they were defined in. Okay. So for our main class here, and let me go ahead and give us uh, just a little bit of room so we can see everything. Let's go ahead and see what is accessible. So is the base classes public member variable available? So I'll just go ahead and assign it here. And if I enter, well, yes. So public, whenever something is public, whether it's coming from one of the parent classes from our drive classes is just available. It's essentially the most um, allowable or most visible type that you can have or access specifier you can have in C++. Everything is public. For folks coming from a background in C programming, for instance, everything by default is public. So you can think of it that way. There's no way to hide information when you say, hey, something is publicly available. Now let's see what protected does. So if I do D for our object here or our instance of this drive class, and I look at our protected member variable, let's go ahead and try to you know, set this to some value here. And if I try to compile, will I get an error? And this time again, I do get an error because protected means in the context that, hey, you're not allowed to be seen from the outside world, but you can be seen in the class that you're derived from. Okay, so that provides some level of encapsulation. So for instance, this is probably a useful thing for you to do if you know you have a base class that's going to serve as sort of an interface, meaning you don't want to expose to the outside world, meaning in your main function or other functions, the state that's being stored here. But you are going to allow that state to be modified within the actual derived or the child class or any children. Again, if I derive a further class from this derived class, it would still be available as well. So that's where the protection sort of stops. And I hope um, I what goes without saying here, I'll just do one more example for completeness um, that if we try to access from our base class private, well, again, you can guess that this is going to throw an error because, well, it's private. It should not be seen to the outside world or outside of the class. OK, so let's go ahead and just mark that down there. Now, there is one other thing to talk about here with inheritance, because I've also left this specifier here public for our base class. And what exactly does that mean that we're publicly seeing this base class? Well, again, this is another access specifier saying, how do we inherit from base? What can we see? And public, again, would be the most um, visible access specifier, meaning saying, hey, if we have public things, they remain public. If they're protected, they remain protected. If they're private, they remain private and so on. But what if I went ahead and modified this and said protected? So I'm going to take in everything from the base class in a protected level. So again, that could be member functions or I'm doing the examples with member variables. So let's go ahead and run this. And this time, we see that, well, this is actually causing a problem here. mbase public member variable here is not accessible. So now this is an error. So in a way, you can think of this as demoting the access levels in our class. So we're saying, hey, this public thing here, we have demoted it. So now when we try to use this mbase public member, which is at line 135 here, excuse me, just 35, this line right here, it's been demoted. So this public, we're saying, hey, bring in the base or derive from the base class, but anything that's public at most, it can be a protected access level. So we can still access 
all of our public members within this class, but this is really, uh, just to be clear here, let me go ahead and show, um, M base public member variable is really protected. Now, since we did drive colon protected base. And this can be a little bit confusing to folks. Um, in fact, in most code bases that I see, you know, this could be useful again if you're using base as a interface. Again, this is going to be more common if you're coming from a Java or say C sharp programming background, um, where you would see protected um, inheritance. And C++, most of the time I see public, but just so you know what this is. So let's go ahead and um, comment this out so that I can't capture state. Now, in general, you do want to be more conservative and leak less information or information about how your class has been implemented. Okay, so again, if I have these derived classes, it's better if I can leak out as few of information as possible about the implementation in most cases. Okay, so let's go ahead and try uh, lowering this level to private here. And then let's go ahead and compile and no problems here. So again, this access has more to do with what can I see outside than what I can see inside. I can still see within um, the derived class, the member variables, if they're protected or public, but it's how can I use the base classes information outside of the class, which we saw uh, was prevented here. Okay, so that is the difference here. So one of the best ways to learn about public, private, and protected is to go through this little exercise that I've just done. Now, before we leave, I do want to show you one other thing that I think will be helpful just to put all this information together. So let's go ahead back here. And I want to give credit where credit is due on a nice uh, Stack Overflow post. So here is the post. You can check out the URL. Here is the uh, user. And if I just scroll down so you can give them some thumbs up. And here is, again, the context. But what I really want to show you is this chart here that I think could be helpful to study along with the code. Just to see that when the class is inherited as public, you can see nothing changes for the resulting access inside the subclass. And you can see the interesting case where we had protected, where everything becomes protected from the subclass, and private when we see private, OK? Um, so again, that specifically, uh, this chart or this table, which I'll make a little bit smaller um, so you can see it here, had to do with when we were doing private, protected, or public-based inheritance here from our class. These access specifiers within the class that we are uh, actually using here and here maintain. Okay, so that's the basic idea. So I hope this provided some clarity into this idea of public, private, and protected. They're probably things that you have seen in some code bases or, again, maybe have been wondering about. Uh, but now that we're doing inheritance and object-oriented programming, we need to know just a little bit more. And the general guideline is to try to be conservative and leak as little of information as possible when designing your classes. Some of that will take practice. Some of it might take working with your company and their sort of coding guidelines to figure out what to do. I've worked at places where you make everything struct by default and figure things out. And I've worked places where you make things classes by default, and it just depends on the context. So talk with who you're working with. And if you're just studying this, the best way to learn this stuff or the way that I've learned it is by just doing a little example like we did and guessing what is the protection level going to be or how visible is some member variable or member function. All right, folks, I hope you found that useful. I hope that clears up some confusion on access modifiers in C++. And if you enjoyed this, make sure that you like and subscribe because we've got more coming for you later. Take care, folks.